My name is Pete Smith. I work for Delta Learning Services. We offer a wide range of remedial and enrichment activities for students. One of the things I enjoy doing is tutoring for SAT verbal preparation. There are two sections on the SAT that are verbal. One of them is critical reading and the other is writing. Today I'm going to go over with you how to do a strategy for sentence completion. There are really wonderful strategies to help you with every section of the SAT. Sentence completion has a simple strategy that can really help you improve your score. As you know, sentence completion refers to a sentence that has either one or two blanks in it. For example, John was blank when Mary accepted his invitation to the party. Now think of every word in each sentence as a pearl in a, on a string. Each one is matched and it's there for a reason. The same is true of these words. They are there to give you clues. They are like the arrows on a, or the blue lights on a runway that go to a certain conclusion, and that's what you want to do. All right, this one is very simple. My examples will be simple because I want you to understand the strategy. Unfortunately, the actual sentences on the SAT will be more complex. For this reason, you should have the best vocabulary you can have when you prepare for SAT. Many of the books will have vocabulary lists that you should know for the SAT. John was blank when Mary accepted his invitation to the party. Clearly, if Mary accepted his invitation, he wanted her to, and so John would be happy, right? Happy, eager, to please, jubilant, any word that has to do with a good feeling. He was pleased, he was tickled, he was thrilled. Okay, to this point, you haven't looked at the answer words, that's right, you don't even look at them until you have analyzed the sentence completely and written a word in the blank. Now you can look at the answers, and your job is to pick the word which is most like the word you put in the blank. Okay? Another one. This is, John was happy and blank when Mary accepted his invitation to the party. A very similar sentence, but it shows us one of the most common kinds of clues. I call it a synonym clue. John was happy and blank. Okay, when they set you up in this way, they want you to put in a word that is a synonym for happy. So you could put in joyous, jubilant, thrilled, Anything that means the same thing as happy, that's a synonym clue. Another kind of common clue they give you is this kind. I call it a definition clue. Daryl was noted for his feelings of envy, a jealousy so blank that it exceeded all boundaries. I've marked the major clues in this sentence to help you. All right. He was an envious person. Not only that, he was so much that way that it exceeded all boundaries. So you're going to look for a word that means extreme or out of the box, outrageous, something like that. So mark your clues after you've analyzed the sentence, write your word in the blank, then and only then look at the answer words. Very often, they will give you an example or a definition of the word, okay? Now, other kinds of clues that you might find on the SAT sentence is, uh, well, there is a list. What they call support words, contrast words, surprising words, Cause and effect words are also listed, and watch out for negatives and double negatives. Now here's an example sentence for these three. Joe was an excellent carpenter. Blank, he was a talented painter. We're gonna go with a support signal, okay? A word like also, 
or in addition, additionally, moreover, words like that. So that is a support signal. Now there is also a contrast signal which you should keep your eye out for. I'm going to change the sentence a little bit here. Now we have, Joe was an excellent carpenter, blank, he was not a talented painter. Okay? However, is a contrast word. It changes the direction of the sentence. Another possibility might be, despite this, or um, however, despite, nonetheless, words like that. Also, you can use a surprising word here if you have not. John Joe was an excellent carpenter. Oddly, he was not a talented painter. Unexpectedly, surprisingly, he was not a talented painter. Those are some of the kinds of clues you will find in the SAT sentences. I hope this helps you. Now, there is one other kind of sentence on this section. It is a two-blank sentence. Students fear these, but there's really no reason to, because in my mind, it gives you double the possibilities of being correct. Here is an example. This is straight from the book. Macabre's habit of spending more than he earned left him in a state of perpetual blank, but he blank hoping to see a more affluent day. Now, this is a good example of why you should expand your vocabulary, too. Some of you will not know <coughs> these two words, perpetual and affluent. Perpetual means ongoing, forever present. Affluent means wealthy. Now, let's look at our clues his habit of spending more than he earned, okay? So he spent more than he made or more than he could afford to. This left him in a state of everlasting, <coughs> okay? Pennilessness, debt, poverty, poorness, anything like that, okay? <coughs> but here's a contrast clue. He blanked, hoping to see a more wealthy day. In other words, he's hoping to see a change in his situation. Now, he kept hoping. He persisted in hoping. Something like that, okay? Now, we filled in our blanks. We analyzed the clues just like we would do in a one-blank sentence. All right, now our strategy changes just a little bit. Now I'm gonna look at my two blanks and decide which one is more, I'm more sure of, I'm more confident about. In this case, I think number one, pennilessness is something I'm pretty sure they were heading for here, a state of perpetual poverty. Okay, so I'm going to look at the five answer choices. I'm not looking for the right answer, though. I'm just looking to eliminate wrong <coughs> answers. On the SAT, there are five multiple choices. All right? I'm looking to eliminate words that do <coughs> the property. Let's say choice A, choice C, and choice D have nothing to do with property. So we'll get rid of those. <coughs> now we only have two choices left. When I look at my second blank that I was not so sure of, I only have to look at two answers now and decide which one is closer to what I was thinking. Okay? I hope you understand. If you're interested in the way I teach and if you want to find out about more strategies for the verbal sections of the SAT, you can reach me through Delta Learning Specialists at our email address or you can call me at 425-445-3989, and I will return your call if I don't pick up. Thank you for your attention. I hope this was helpful.